Hey everybody, welcome to episode 5 of Nicholas Uncaged. Hopefully this intro is good enough for Nick. I'll be damned if I didn't get really turned on. Great, it gets the cage seal of approval, because today's video is going to be a long one, so the intro can't be. Today we're watching the 2004 John Turtletub movie, National Treasure. I apologize, normally I time me saying the title with the title card of the movie, but I can't really find it in this movie, so we just have to keep going. We open the movie with Nick Cage as a kid and his grandfather telling him about this amazing treasure that's been hidden to history. We get a really cool camera effect here of his eye fading on top of the pyramid, but don't get your hopes up if you think this is an artsy film, this is literally the only shot like this, and the rest of the editing unravels very quickly. He tells him about how our forefathers rounded up a bunch of collectibles and valuables from history, hid them all to the world so no looters and things could get them, and then left a bunch of clues for us to try to figure them out. And the kid goes, clues? Treasure? Yep, that's enough for me to dedicate my whole life to this. And there's our boy. And he's off in the Arctic tundra looking for something treasure. Oh, and there's our title card. Okay, can I put that sooner? I've been talking for like three minutes. <laughs> okay. I apologize if I'm complaining quite quickly into this movie, but this movie just suffers from coincidental heroism. Like, Nick Cage is a treasure hunter. He's out here looking for a ship frozen in the ice. He just starts kind of guessing, and then he hits the ship. And then he wipes some snow away, and he hit the exact part of the ship that has the name of the ship. And then he goes downstairs, and coincidentally, the captain is holding one barrel. And he finds clues in the barrel. And then he finds the pipe. And then he knows exactly what to do with the pipe. And then he finds a riddle. And in two minutes, solves the riddle. The legend, the key, a map. The stain affected reagent used to bring about a certain result. A few of the other people in the scene are like, we can do it too. Prison. Albuquerque. See, I can do it too. And Nick Cage is like, huh, no, okay, but seriously, I, I have a gift. The Declaration of Independence. Oh yeah, Sean Bean is in this movie, but don't like get your hopes up, because he's probably going to die and two to three minutes if I know a Sean Bean movie. But he suggests to steal the declaration, because how else are you going to look at it? Nick doesn't like that. I'm not going to let you steal the Declaration of Independence. And they say, well, we're treasure hunters, and we really want this, so we're probably going to shoot you now. And Nick Cage is like, okay, I'll blow us up. Yeah, I'm crazy. That escalated quickly. And Sean Bean almost thwarts it, but because of Nick Cage's coincidental luckiness, the flare just like explodes in his hand, and the plan goes off anyways. And once again, Nick Cage knows absolutely everything about everything. What is this? Smugglers will get in! Yeah, we'll somehow survive if we're two feet below this massive explosion. Because I'm Nicolas Cage and this movie's about me. Okay, can you remind us of the plot? It's been about 30 seconds since you brought it up. He's gonna steal the Declaration of Independence, Ben. They then run away and tell as many people as possible about the plot of the movie. Someone's gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. They quickly lose all credibility. A treasure map? That's where we lost the FBI. You guys are spiraling. Quick, say something to gain some credibility. It's invisible. You blew it! And that's where we lost the Department of Homeland Security. And then he's like, you know what? Sean Bean might have been on to something. This can't be that hard. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. And Riley's baffled. He's like, okay, explain this one to me. Ian's gonna try to steal it. The only way to protect the Declaration is to steal it. All right. But the only way this is going to work is if we do like an Ocean's Eleven style montage. But don't worry, Nick Cage has been doing some reading too. Nick, tell him what you learned. You know, Thomas Edison tried and failed nearly 2,000 times to develop the carbonized co- And Riley's like, God damn it, I gave him the wrong book. He's like, okay, Nick, you, you just have fun out there, champ. Okay, I'm going to go to work now, and I'm going to try to figure out how to do this. Nick's like, awesome, I'm going to go eat an enchilada. Wait, you're seriously not going to help? I mean, dude, I have to like temperature sensors to go off. I have to design a camera laser thingy. I successfully got them to move the document to that room. What have you been doing? It's like, I, I sent a gift to the pretty lady. Dude, we are seriously underprepared. Like, I've been doing everything. You've just been hanging out? Nick's like, okay, yep, that sounds good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go steal the declaration now. Look at me, I'm in a jumpsuit. Ben, are you sure that we should do that? Okay, I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. Uh, cue my heist music. Ben. Bam, 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 fake ID. Ah, bam, 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 tuxedo. Bam, 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 pretty girl. Bam, bam. Wait, pretty girl? Nick, focus, focus, focus. Right, bam, down my drink. Bam, 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 plastic baggy. Bam, 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 flashlight. Bam, bam, this keyboard's gross. Bam, bam, guess the code. Bam, bam, and type it in. Bam, and I'm in. And 
then after all that dumb luck, he finally gets there and he's like, oh man, how do I get this out? You, yeah, screw it. I'm taking the whole thing. I'll get it out in the elevator. And as Nick is waiting for the elevator, he's like, wait, I think I hear something. Wait, damn it. We just planned our own heist and sung our own song. What was it all for? And he's like, I don't know. I'm really sorry. Bye. So like, oh, it worked. It worked. Okay, play cool. Play cool. Play cool. Stop talking. Pretty girl gets suspicious. What? This? It's just... Uh, it's a map. I made it. I made it. She's like, mm, eh, not buying it. Would you hand that over to me right now? He goes, yeah, no, totally, totally. Almost too easy. <laughs> and they conveniently forget about Sean Bean. And he's like, okay, yeah, there's like five of us. I'll, I'll just take this from you now. I thank you. Thank you very much. Got it. <laughs> and she's like, they took the map. And Nick's like, they don't have it because I bought one at the gift store. <laughs> Well done, and Nick's feeling really clever about his plan, and then Riley's like, A credit card slip? Don't worry, they'll never find out. Charge to Benjamin Gates. Oh, shit. So they try to buy some time by lying low at his dad's house where they can inspect the document. Dad. And Abigail's like, I'm the expert here. Let me do this. And like, it's not working. Be seductive. Seduce it. Breathe. Breathe on it. And then as soon as that works, all her professionalism goes out the window. She has zero care and is just hair drying the map at full volume, I assume. So they go to Philadelphia because they know that these codes line up with some letters and that's their next clue. And they pay this little kid to do it because I guess they're like wanted fugitives now. And the little kids bump into Sean Bean. He's still alive in this movie. It's been like an hour and a half and he's still in. That's impressive. This has to be a record, I think. But Riley solves the riddle on his own. He's like, it's the Liberty Bell. And then he gets stoked, and he does some research, and he goes to tell the crew. Referring to... The Liberty Bell. Why, why do you have to do that? And they're dicks about it, but whatever. Aquafina paid for this scene anyways. But see, Sean Bean's not a monster. He pays the kid for information, too. He uses Yahoo? Okay, no, that's it. Burn him! Okay, you know, no. I'll let you have the daylight savings thing. I'll let you have the church, the bell, the poem, whatever you want. But you're telling me this clue depends on a shadow cast by the sun onto a brick and you just showed up on the correct day by coincidence you know daylight savings time is not the only thing that determines where the sun is in the sky right in order for you to find this brick you'd have to have like a big symbol on it or so oh all right no i'll give you that one that's yep okay my bad so yeah they find their next clue some kind of ocular device ocular device nick their glasses dude call them glasses sean bean and the boys catch up to him and nick's like play it cool play it cool just walking Okay, now run. And as these two run away, they come across some businessmen that used to be football players. And they block Riley. They're like, ha <laughs> LSU, class of 85, bro. And Abigail's so impressed, she hits a bicyclist and chucks the map into the street. And Sean Bean steals the ring from Frodo. I mean, the map from Abigail. How has he not died yet in this movie? And the whole ordeal clearly has them shaken. Because Riley and Abby are like, do we enter now? Oh, no, it's not our scene. Run away. Do we enter now? No, okay, not yet. And now we walk around the corner. Nailed it. First try. All right, everybody, reset. Let's try it again from the top. So the cops capture Nick Cage. And he's like, can I not go to prison, please? Someone's got to go to prison, Ben. But then almost as if he senses it, Sean Bean calls him. Sean Bean's like, I don't feel good. I've been around way too long. I'm supposed to die by now in this movie. I can I please re-enter the plot to endanger myself further? And they were like, okay, but only if we do another super complicated rescue scene. And Nick's like, deal, but I want to jump off a boat and you rescue me with divers and we do that thing that I did in The Rock. And the thing I don't get is Sean Bean has the declaration. He has the map. He knows Nick Cage hasn't been honest at all because he doesn't want him to have the treasure, clearly. And he's like, I'll bring him back and I'll just ask him. Where's the treasure? Now, where is it? Where's my treasure? Clearly, he won't lie to me again. So he brings his dad as an insurance policy, and John Voight loves being a hostage. I'm a hostage. He even heckles them. Just another clue, Dad. And if I'm being honest, I don't know how somebody hasn't found this treasure sooner. Like, these Freemason symbols are just kind of apparently all over the place. Just find those, take that thing, break that thing, pour some water on that thing. Okay, I take back everything I say previously about the realism of this movie. The fakest part of this whole movie is they find these super old torches and they just light them. Have you ever tried to light a charcoal grill before? That stuff is brand new. You pour fluid on it, still can't light it. This magic oil rag stays damp for hundreds of years. Hashtag don't believe that shit. Oh yeah, and while they're going down there, this dude just dies. Like, wood rot's a real thing, bro. Okay, it isn't enough that you made a movie that's almost exactly like an Indiana Jones movie. You had to steal this exact scene from Holy Grail. <laughs> 
Oh, except your scene works out better. You're not better than Indiana Jones, bro. Don't you dare swing on that rope. Indiana Jones has done that a thousand times before you. Ha ha ha! Son of a bitch. So they go down into the mines of Moria and they find this abandoned treasure room. And Sean Bean wisely takes the high ground. And he's like, I know you're lying to me. You lied to me before. So I'm not falling for it this time. Give me the next clue. Tell me where to go. And I'm going to go get my treasure. And then John Voight just spews a load of shit. The lantern is the clue. Complete garbage. Sean Bean buys every word. And he leaves them in the treasure room. (laughs) Through the treasure room. And then they go to the secret room in the secret room. And it's empty too. And what makes no sense is the previous room was empty. They didn't buy it. They knew something else was going on. The next room is empty? Heartbreaking. Really thought I was going to find the treasure. And they're like, wait. What about that thing in the wall that's shaped exactly like that thing I have? And then they find the actual treasure room. Yay! And the first thing Nick Cage does is put his torch in a mysterious liquid. That sadly results in the death of everybody in the room. End of movie. Just kidding, but that totally should have happened because this is so careless of you, Nick. You don't expect the treasure room to have a single trap? Have you played Skyrim? So yeah, he does find his treasure. He then calls the FBI. This guy shows up and he's like an NPC in a video game because he only has one line. Someone's got to go to prison, man. And Nick Cage is like, hey, I know a complete idiot you can throw in jail. And then the cops shoot Sean Bean. Oh, whoa, they don't. They arrest him? Wait, the movie is like over. Are you sure? Sean Bean, you got out of this one alive? Does that even feel normal? And then our heroes got off scot-free. They made a ton of money. Nick Cage tries to educate us at the very end to no avail. Yeah, it's someone that did something in history to have fun. It's great. A map. Where does it lead to? Are you talking about doing it? You'll figure it out. Yeah, you're talking about doing it. And that's National Treasure. It's actually over now. I wish it had ended in the treasure room, but this is the ending we get. All in all, I do love this movie. It is a blatant ripoff of Indiana Jones, but it's still fun to watch because it's Nick Cage. And I'll be honest, I don't know what our next Nick Cage movie will be. I think I want to do one of his weirder ones. Maybe one that's a little less mainstream, so look out for that. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you gotta do. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy.